welcome back everyone. We are going through such the law dump. I, I keep saying that. And it's partly true. We're making headway with the story, but for me it's lore dumping. Get a ton of lore, you have to sit down and fucking read it all. Helpful. But it's relatively good. Now my question is... Why can't I get in there? I passed this. Oh, am I supposed to go this way? No. Maybe? Bunker door. Is that where I came from? I can't remember. I'm trying to figure out how to get two pieces of law that are behind glass, I want to say. I've seen these shapes before. In cauldrons. But of course. I'm Marco Shen, and this is Hephaestus. The As the name might tip you off, this is going to be the subordinate function that Gaia will use to make lots and lots of robots. Her personal forge. Except, it's not that simple. Um, so like, you probably noticed that only about a third of you are robotics engineers. The rest, experts in machine cognition, virtual heuristics, that stuff. Well, that's because we aren't going to be the ones designing and building robots. The last thing we want is to burden Gaia with a bunch of outmoded 21st century designs. Waste of time. Our purpose is to empower Gaia to build the robots. And not just build, imagine, from scratch. Any robot she needs for any conceivable purpose, designed and fabricated at a snap of a finger. Hers. Her finger. So, Hephaestus isn't really the forge. It's more like the knowledge of craft and ingenuity of a master smith to wield the hammer. Encoded as software. Virtual creativity made real. Gaia's already learning. In simulation, she's doing some very creative things with fractal assembly and animal morphologies. Her designs aren't about to win the Liam Prize anytime soon, but hey, everyone has to start somewhere. So, yes, time to get started. Let's do this. I don't get it. Which part? It's a little technical at places. If Gaia was designed to save life, why would the robots it makes attack people? Perhaps it loves some forms of life more than others. The derangement. The machines weren't always so angry. True. Mostly they were docile until 10, 15 years ago. For years, Hephaestus has been forcing cauldrons to make aggressive machines. I've seen it myself, in the cauldrons. Stalkers, ravagers, the Thunderjaw. How could it do that? And why? Why indeed. Okay, so this is where I came from. Oh god, more resource boxes. And metal shards. I'll take this. And a Deathbringer. And even more metal shards. Okay, this is getting kind of annoying. I don't want the Deathbringer. I want the loot. Not Deathbringer. Loot. all the way around is that what I have to do okay I came from over there I have to go this one Uh, I 
feel like I'm just going around in circles like this, but... I'm trying to get in there. And there. Might be able to get there from here. Might be. Might be from below. Okay, I read that to Moray. Welcome to Apollo. The collective memory of the human species and the wellspring of knowledge for future generations. I am Samina <laughs> Elbaji. Until recently, I was director of the International Collective Memory... Still sniffing Shadow around. Quartz. I lost her. <laughs> I attack Keep one person, up. quote unquote, silently, and they all get alerted. I see. You don't see shit. Got him over. Help me, brothers! Help me, brothers! So, how do I get... Uh, I don't know how to get over there. This is gonna take forever. So, let's speed things up a little bit. Was that... Was that seriously a good then? See if anything is left. I'm looking silence, but apparently there's nothing left. Here is testimony. Okay, 
So how do I get back over here? Or rather, up to the 1A. Because I feel like I'm missing quite a bit of lore. Try me now. Can I not go that way yet? Okay, there's gotta be uh, there's gotta be something I'm missing here. Be prepared. Is it something over here, by chance? It doesn't look like it. Am I supposed to read the thingy? So many th audio points and other stuff to read. Uh, this is gonna be such a lord up. Oh man. Hollow update, it's encapsulated to DNA. Uh, uh, simulation results? Uh, from Elizabeth Sobek to Margot Shen. Margot, if I doubted your brilliance in the slightest, I wouldn't have picked you as the Hephaestus Alpha. You need to stop worrying about your age and communication style. You are who you are. Have confidence in yourself. You know what you're doing. Case in point, the latest draft of your plan for the construction and stocking of bootstrap silos to store raw materials is excellent. This, combined with your design for the IM Foundry Core, and the foundry sort selection plan add up to a comprehensive plan. It's time to start construction. One detail. Consult with Ayomide Aquilo before you finalize the silo inventories. Hephaestus's first task will be to fabricate the robots that will construct the waveform broadcast towers Minerva will use to transmit the deactivation codes. So any exotic materials needed for the towers should be accounted for in the inventory. Simulation results. You were kidding about guys' predilection for animal morphologies. Sure, not totally unexpected given the rough natural terrain her parts will have to navigate, but I agree that there's something deeper going on here. Her designs aren't just functional, they feel almost like, well, tributes is the word that comes to mind, as though she's already mourning their loss, and not just for the disappearing fauna of our time, but creatures from the fossil record too. References to megafauna in some of her designs. So cool. Well, whatever guy thinks up, Hephaestus will empower her to build it. I just wish we could still be around in a century or two to see what she makes. Margot.
over the past two months, the... Excuse <coughs> <coughs> me. Over the past two months, the full benefit of our procurement of a copy of the Homer Archive from Far Zenith has made itself known, and as a result, all of Apollo's key deliverables are on schedule. Apollo has already surpassed 40 million discrete data entries and continues to grow. The physical science modules are effectively complete, with soft science modules close behind. World history, cultural data, and media archives are also on schedule. Language preservation is wrapping up a bit ahead of schedule due to falling short of our goal to preserve 4,500 languages. I suppose the tragic early loss of Papua New Guinea doomed that goal from the outset, with attendant curricular development about to begin. Speaking of the heuristic curricula, they are performing well in testing, with children and adolescents demonstrating high levels of engagement with and trust in the Aristotle and Aspasia persona. Personally, I find them highly engaging, especially when they debate. I wish half my professors had been so entertaining. <laughs> Pace be with you, Samina. And the winner is Encapsulated DNA. Over the past 10 days, I, perform, I performed an exhaustive review of data storage solutions, magnetic, optical, quantum, even that eternity tech that fast was shilling a year or so ago. But every other solution has one or more fatal shortcomings. Too heavy to transport, too massive to install in the allotted space, too power intensive over the centuries, too prone to failure past 300 to 400 years, etc. Encapsulated DNI will easily hold the 40 plus zettabytes we're projecting for Apollo. Holy shit! Zettabytes? There are still many details to finalise, of course. To start with, we need to select the inert material in which we'll embed the molecules, already testing 16 candidate materials, as well as design and fabricate the power systems and sealed reliquaries that will keep the DNA at negative 18 degrees Celsius for a thousand plus years. So long as I assure you that it didn't factor into my decision, may I confess that I deem it entirely fitting, indeed propitious that we will be using the very building blocks of life to preserve human knowledge from mechanised extinction. It's not just ironic, but heroic. Life as the hero beating back the forces of oblivion. In any case, much to do until next time. Okay, so... Find the entrance to a little bit... Elizabeth Sobek's office. I can speak. I can speak just fine. I'm the fuck you talking about. I speak fucking perfect English. Don't fucking look at me. Welcome Aha. to Hades, Zero Dawn's extinction failsafe protocol, the ultimate killer app. Now, I know what you're thinking. The purpose of Gaia is to resurrect life. So why give her a subordinate function, only purpose of which is to wipe out life all over again? I mean, what the, what? Just plumb crazy, ain't it? Well, no, it isn't. Reconstituting a biosphere? That's a tall order. Tech smart as Gaia may be, odds are she won't get it right the first time. I mean, imagine you're Gaia, 200 years from now, and this new biosphere growing, it's all gone wrong. Alkalines are skyrocketing, coniferous forests eroding under the lash of superstorms that would have drowned Noah. It's chaos, spinning top that won't stop wobbling. Now what are you gonna do? Release phase one organisms into that hot mess? Hope their CO2 and methane can balance out what you got started? Hell no. What you're gonna do, Gaia, is step aside while Hades takes over and does what you're just too darn nurturing 
and life-loving to do, which is burn that misbegotten mess of a biosphere to the ground so Gaia can start over. Okay, not burn, more like reverse terraforming operations and suffocate it. But you get the idea. Hades takes the biosphere back to zero. Square one, blank slate. And then, only then, does it hand the steering wheel back to Gaia and say, try again, old girl. And better this time, or we'll have to do this again. That's Hades. It's pretty badass when you think about it. Extinction on demand. Death on speed dial. All for the greater good, of course, but still, kind of metal. So welcome to Hades. Welcome to the Void. Okay, so if that's the original purpose of Hades, why does it want me extinct? We need more data. And how does it end up in the wreckage of a Pharaoh Titan, getting worshipped by the Eclipse like some kind of god? I'm learning as you are, Aloy. Keep searching. We need more data. More these compliance. Hades Protocol. Tate here just popped three blues, but I earned it. Finally figured out a Goldilocks solution to Gaia's rather extreme executive authority. If that ain't worth 10 to 12 hours of dream time, what is? Before this, every usurp usurpa usurpation protocol or design failed in simulation because it was either too hard or too soft. Too hard and it degraded the Gaia core. Sure, it pried her figurative fingers off the figurative driving wheel so Hades could take control, but by breaking her fingers, sometimes her arms too. So that couldn't fly. Everything depends on Gaia taking control back after Hades has done its business. So we had to find a solution that didn't leave Gaia any worse for wear. Too soft and Gaia only pretended to relinquish control. In simulation after simulation, Hades would take command of the terraforming system and reverse operations only to have Gaia lurk in the background, quietly re-reversing processes and falsifying telemetry to hide its interference. Sneaky. I swear, I ain't nothing. I swear, ain't nothing Gaia wouldn't do to keep life going, even when it's just simulated plant life. Turns out the just right solution is to isolate Gaia in a protective code shell, preserving its integrity, then unseat it from command position so Hades can slip into the figurative captain's chair and work its magic. Those blues are coming on strong now, so I'm not really describing it so clear, but pretty sure it'll work. Oh no. Did Hades never put uh, Gaia back on the wheel in the captain's chair? I think that's what happened. Archive abuse! Uh, from Samina Ibaji to Travis Tate. Copy Elizabeth Sobek. Mr. Tate, this mail concerns Apollo Archive Submission Number. Oh my goodness. Your 666th submission in just five days, and oh, what a daisy. Despite earlier warnings, reply inappropriate materials, you chose to submit 265 holographic remasters of acknowledged classics from extreme exploitation cinema. Allow me then to thank you on two counts. One, for giving me the pleasure of rejecting your submission, thereby co con consigning your favourite Eastern European torture flicks and their ilk to the dust heap of oblivion. It truly warms my heart to know that I have saved future humanity from the ordeal of experiencing not just one, but all 16 installments of making a millipede. Don't worry, the Pasolini material has already been preserved. Extreme, perhaps, but aren't. Two, for clarifying a concept that has so long been ambiguous and ethically fraught for archivists such as myself. The definition of obscenity. 
You have freed me from the subjective quagmire embodied in Judge Potter's famous utterance, I know it when I see it. Thanks to you, I can now apply a single objective criterion. If Travis Tate submitted it, it's obscene. <laughs> Accordingly, I have directed Apollo staff to summarily reject all of your future submissions, sight unseen. Perhaps you might invest the time you would have spent preparing further submissions on, oh, I don't know, your signed work. We have a world to save, after all. Or the rest of us do, anyway. <laughs> what was he submitting? Like, uh, Friday the 13th videos or something? <laughs> Is that the obscenity he was talking about? Or she, rather? <laughs> Welcome to Eleuthia, the crown and king of Gaia's subordinate functions. For it is by Eleuthia that the human race will continue to exist. I am Patrick Brochard Klein, the Alpha in charge of this program. Now, let one thing be perfectly clear from the outset. Eleuthia is not a genetic engineering project. Our goal is to preserve the human genome, not alter it. A snapshot of human genetic diversity, literally frozen in time. The genetic quintessence of our species, unmodified. Under my watch, our activities and initiatives will comply with the 2034 clone provisions and the 2048 rally accords. Now that may seem a quaint, even trivial concern to you in light of present circumstances, but as one of the authors of the accords, it is far from trivial to me. The practical challenges before us are staggering in scope and complexity, but <laughs> not insurmountable. No. Global collation and provisional storage of zygotes, perfection of exogenic technologies, design and perfection of servitors to provide nurture and inculcation during early child development, all of these program components must and will proceed in tandem. To say nothing of the breakneck construction of cradle facilities at sites around the world. So, si vous êtes prêt, let us begin. What? I, I don't. I don't understand. Z chambers. And these. Cradle servitor. Artificial wars. Machines to spawn a new generation of human beings. Cradle sailed. I think this is all stuff we're gonna have to read in the next episode of Lord um, what is this, volume 7 or 8 now? <laughs> oh my goodness. I hope to see you all there as we slowly reach the uh, climax of this game. Slowly, might, might I add again. Shh. <laughs>